be splitting with the member for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley, the common sense conservative. Madam Speaker, we just learned moments ago that this government has been keeping a $20 billion secret. Wow. Common sense conservatives have been demanding the government release the real cost of the carbon tax after the parliamentary budget officer revealed that there was a report the government had been covering up and had gagged him from releasing about the actual cost to Canadians. Now, because common sense conservatives brought forward this motion before the committee, yeah. before the House, because of our relentless questioning and the pressure that is weighing heavily on li uh, Liberal MPs, the government has finally relented and released part of the information. It had to be pulled out like a rotten tooth, <laughs> Madam Speaker, and rotten it is, $20 billion per year in lost GDP as a result of the carbon tax. That wow. works out to $1,200 per family wow. in extra annual costs for Canadians. $20 billion for 17 million families is $1,200 a family in higher costs that this Prime Minister has been covering up not once in any of the tables that he released to claim that Canadians were somehow better off with the carbon tax and rebate. Did he include these economic costs that he knew existed? Why? Because he wanted to continue to spread the falsehood. He wanted to tell Canadians that paying more for gas, heat and groceries would make them better off. Just like he claimed that raising their income tax would make the middle class better off. 90% of middle class income taxpayers are now paying more than they were nine years ago when he promised to cut their taxes. And then of course yesterday we tested their claim that only the $800,000 a year investment banker who is in the top 0.13% would pay this new tax, job killing tax on home building, farmers, small businesses and health care. And we, we tested it by simply saying, sure, if that's the case, then you'll amend your bill to say that anybody who's part of the 99.87% of the population will be excluded from any new capital gains taxes. And the minister refused to do that because we all know that it will be plumbers, electricians, carpenters, farmers, small businesses, restaurant owners who will pay this liberal tax increase. What we're coming to understand is that you cannot believe a word this Prime Minister says about money or about taxes. Because at the end of the day, he has an insatiable appetite for other people's money. He wants to stuff the face of his obese, morbidly obese government with the hard-earned tax dollars of, of working-class Canadians. And he has the full support of the greedy NDP to do it. The NDP believes that your money is their money. And they are here for one purpose, to help the Prime Minister vacuum up every single nickel that hard-working Canadians, and including entrepreneurs, earn on the ground. But common sense conservatives uh, are exactly the opposite. You'll notice that we take delight in the fact that we don't fit in in this place. We stand out. We stand out as the only party that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. And, and so, you know, here, here we are today uh, uh, with this government again raising taxes. Again, making claims that are demonstrably false when you look at their own documents. Look at the capital gains issue. First, the government claimed only 44,000 people would pay. Small number. But they all live on a hill somewhere. But then they admit that 300,000 separate businesses, most of them small businesses, will pay. So there's 300,000 businesses 
but only 44,000 will pay? Hmm, I find it hard to believe that each of these 44,000 people own six different businesses. No, in reality, those 300,000 businesses probably have millions of owners and definitely have millions of employees. All of them will pay the tax. Then they said, we're very concerned that welders are paying a higher tax rate than investors. They said, okay, why don't you just, we have a NOC code, a, a national occupation code for a welder. You could say in the law that anybody who's a welder, as defined by the national occupation code, is excluded. Nope, she wouldn't do that. I said, I said, let's exclude the NOC code for carpenters. Nope, didn't want to do that either. Let's exclude, why don't we exclude nurses? Because the nurses uh, who, who uh, invest in rental properties or may have a uh, family cottage that they want to sell, they could ex exclude nurses. So go look up the NOC code for nurses, d pop that right into the Income Tax Act, say no nurse will pay this higher tax rate. Nope, they weren't willing to do that either. In fact, we know that because they want to tax nurses, carpenters, welders, electricians. They want to tax everybody. In fact, I went even further. I said, why don't we just exclude everybody who makes less than $120,000 a year? Great idea. Nope. They don't want to do that either. Wow. So it turns out wow. if none of these people are affected by the tax, the minister should have said, oh, that's easy. Yeah, we can, we'll have that drafted up this afternoon. We'll put it in there. No problem. But of course not because she knows exactly what she's doing. She's putting her greedy hands in the pockets of working class people and she's stealing their money just like she did with the carbon tax, just like they did when they raised income tax, just like they did in 2017 when they went after our small business tax creators. The good news is that we have defenders of the taxpayers in this party, the tax fighters are all on this side of the house, the common sense conservatives. If you're out there and you're working hard, you've seen your housing costs double, you're worried about losing your home, you've got uh, two or even three jobs just to avoid eviction, you might feel a loss of hope. But the good news is that life was not like this before this Prime Minister and the NDP, and it won't be like this after they're gone. Here, here. We're going to bring home the Canada that we knew and still love by axing the tax, building the homes, fixing the budget, and stopping the crime. We will make, once again make this a country where hard work pays off, where our entrepreneurs are incentivized and rewarded and honored, not demonized, where we don't turn workers against business owners, we turn workers into business owners here, in a country here. where hard work brings a powerful paycheck and pension that buys affordable food, gas, and uh, food and homes in safe neighborhoods. That is what the common people deserve, the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home.